Greetings all, my name is JD from Su2105. Welcome back to Direct Access Mix Stream and a brand new episode of Weekly Update Wednesday. This week's video, I'm going to be touching on the subject of something that's called the Red Like Syndrome. What is all about? What is it? Why is it something that all you know musicians face and all of us fear it? And you know what are some of the steps and what are some of the ways that we can overcome it? Let me start off by welcoming all new viewers to this channel. If you are not yet a subscriber, please do click on the subscribe button. Don't forget to click on the notification bell as well so that you'll be updated every time I put out a brand new video. I want to give a big shout out to all the patrons who help to support the channel financially. Uh, if you want to find out more on how you can become a patron, head on down to the website www.patreon.com slash studio2105 Don't forget also to sign up for the email list for a bunch of free stuff. Alright, check it out. Is it just me that when the moment comes and I hit the record button, all the skills go poof, even though I have no problem playing when I'm not recording? This question comes from Michelle Lee in Malaysia and it's a fantastic question because it's something that everyone can relate to. Now, you pick up the guitar, you hit the record on the DAW and suddenly all your hand-eye coordination just goes out the window. Even though you played, you know, the chord progression, you played the lick perfectly just a minute ago. Now, trust me, it's happened to everyone at some point in time. And in over two decades of working with artists and musicians, you know, I've also witnessed this countless times in the studio. You're with the producer and the engineer in the studio, you prepared your entire life for this moment. You know, you pick up the guitar or you know, you pick up the drumsticks, but then all of a sudden, when the red light comes on, you suddenly forget what you're doing. So there's something about being under the microscope you know, when recording. Every fumble, every little miss note seems to be just amplified, right? Un uh, under the monitors and, and in the headphones. The sound of the click track again okay, sends shivers down the spine. The producer, you know, your bandmates, they get upset, they get pissed at you. And what about the money that, that all your parents spent on, on your music lessons? Lah? Funnily, the Urban Dictionary calls this red light syndrome. And it's defined as, you know, where a person has musical talent, but once they're being recorded, they fall to pieces. So this Fear and uncertainty is perfectly normal. That's how we've evolved as human beings, right? To, to have a fight or flight response, you know, when presented with a threat, which in this case, right, the threat of embarrassment. Lah. <laughs> now, it's similar to having, you know, the performance anxiety. It stems from the same thing. Uh, when we walk out in front on a stage, right, in front of a crowd, you know, we get nervous, we get, you know, uh, chill, we start sweating, our palm stats start getting sweaty. Uh, even when you want to talk or so, we find it hard. So this, you know, everyone who's done public speaking or has ever performed live can definitely remember, right, uh, going through this experience. We experience an adrenaline rush that, you know, puts our brain in this temporary state of heightened focus and heightened awareness. The only difference being that, you know, in a recording situation, you can always go back, fix your mistakes, and if you have your own studio at home, right, you can take as much time as you want like, until you've got the takes that you're happy with. Obviously, if you're doing this in a studio it's uh, that's being paid for, a commercial space, that's a different question altogether. I'll address that later at the end of this video. So one of the first things that you can adopt is a positive attitude. Yes, I know it's cliche, all right, you know, I think positive and all that, but telling yourself, right, that first of all, yeah, it's no big deal. You know, this is not an important audition. You're not in a competition with, you know, judges, um, you know, telling yourself that, right, you've got this, right? 
This is the first step. Number two, always record. Have it set up so that you are always in the habit of recording yourself even though you're not in a recording session. Now, if you can't get an access to a DW, be it a PC or a laptop, even a simple uh, smartphone or some kind of a, a mobile device will also do. Just put yourself in that situation. Always put yourself in the situation on where that red light is on. Record yourself practicing. Record yourself warming up. Press record even though you're going for a practice take. Record a video if, if you can. If you have a camera, record a video of yourself playing. Listen back, you know, evaluate, take notes. Make it an exercise so that the act of recording, you know, when it comes time to the real thing, it becomes second nature to you. Number three, the click track is your friend. Make it a habit to always practice with a metronome, right? There are plenty of apps available, so take advantage of these tools. In letting the click be your friend, it's very important to be actually and actively listening to it. I see sometimes, right, in recording sessions when the musicians, you know, start, you know, tapping their feet vigorously, you know, nodding their head. In my experience, these only serve as distractions, right? They only detract from this sort of communication. I actually feel that it's actually better, right? And again, right, it's my opinion, that learning to relax and really just listen to the click. Just think of it as if you're just sitting, you know, across a, a friend of yours and listening to them talk to you. Treat it in such a way. Combine this with consistent practice. Soon this click track right, will no longer be a source of stress and anxiety. Instead, it's something right, that you will come to appreciate and you will come to love. Number four, change the click. Use different sounds. This is a great strategy that you can use. Right? Instead of the typical you know, electronic or the metallic sound that usually comes with you know, the DW, the default sounds, you know, I personally like using soft percussion sounds, right? Uh, things such as, you know, the wood block, a clave, or, right, use loops and grooves instead. Now, during the recording, the only time I actually use the click is usually during that initial tracking session, the very first session, which typically, usually, it's for the drums. And once that's been laid down, I find it's much more useful, right? when it comes to overdub the bass, the guitars, and the other instruments, to lock in and groove to the recorded drum parts instead of having the click track by all the time. Tightness right, is not about how in time you are with the click, how precise you land on the musical grid, but it's about how the various instruments interact with each other, especially right those that are in the rhythm section. Now, a good musician knows how to lay back, you know how to push a little bit ahead of the click, right, if they want to uh, generate a little bit more excitement. The key thing is that if the whole band plays together, it's perfectly fine if uh, music is not exactly precisely on a click. Number five, record in sections. Instead of tackling the entire song in one go, focus on smaller sections, you know, for example, just work on the intro first, then you move on, work on the verse, Work on the pre-chorus, work on the chorus itself, work on the bridge, solo, etc. until you get the entire song. A good method to sort of uh, keep the flow is by doing, right, what we call cycle or loop recording. Every DAW has this function. You can always set, right, a loop, right, or a, a region where you can cycle around. Maybe, you know, 8 bars, 16 bars of the verse and when you're working on it, you record several takes. And once you feel that you've got a couple of good takes, right, you can stop and look at the different takes you have, and you can always comp the final version, right, from the best parts of, of uh, each given take until you've got your final comp. Be careful though not to overwhelm yourself with too many options. Now, I usually find that, you know, I usually aim for about four to five takes. After four or five takes, stop evaluate, right, listen, try and come together a good take. And if I'm still not happy with what I've got, I just repeat the process until you get the desired results. 
For anyone who's interested, I suggest taking a look at the recording session videos, right? That's from the Direct Access Music Production Workshop playlist. So you can take a look at, you know, an over the shoulder kind of look at how a session is being done, right? Whether from the artist uh, standpoint, and also especially from the engineer and the producer's standpoint as well. Number six, learn your DAW. And one of the most frustrating things, right, that also breaks the flow, you know, is having to start and stop the recording between each take, and especially if you're recording right, yourself at home. Learn all the important shortcut keys in your DAW and other functions as well, such as, you know, how to set up right automatic punch ins and punch outs you know how to set markers um how to work with uh, certain uh, templates you know all these things which help to speed up the workflow now if you can hire an engineer or get a friend who's got a good grasp of your daw that's even better so that you know you can focus on the performance so your brain doesn't have to juggle between you know the artistic side and the technical side so you can pay attention on just playing your instrument or singing the song. So in conclusion, if you are brand new to recording, it's perfectly acceptable right, to experience this. So with a combination of time, experience, and you know, uh, hours of practice, you will arrive at a point where you know, suddenly the only barrier that should remain would be your own creativity and your, your own demands of perfection. And now, some hard to swallow pills as well, okay? Now, there's an often used phrase, right, known as the five P's of production. Uh, in some versions, there's also six P's, uh, but we'll stick with five P's for this video. And that is prior preparation prevents poor performance. I cannot overemphasize the importance of this. You know, a lot of singers and a lot of musicians that I see, right, that are struggling with recording in the studio, very often, I, I, it's very, very evident that they have, you know, underestimated the process of recording and overestimated their own ability. They have vocalists that come to a session without memorizing the lyrics, without learning the parts, without figuring out their um, the harmonies or what sort of ad-libs they want to do. Uh, and if you're still reading off a lyric sheet or worse, looking at the phone screen, it's crystal clear that, you know, he or she hasn't spent enough time learning the song. Even musicians with live playing uh, experience can also fall into this trap, you know. Unless you are one of the top session players in the business, strolling into a recording thinking that, you know, it's the same as a jam session, you can somehow vibe your way through the whole thing. You know, it's just an exercise in futility. You're just, you know, letting your pride get in the way. Lah. You have to know the song inside out front to back, commit to memory all the words, all the parts, all the chords, all the different transitions, all the sections, right? Practice, practice and practice. When it comes time to right work, you got to remove all your distractions, focus on the job at hand. You know, especially in this day and age, I know it's it sounds like a boomer rant, you know, really gets on my nerves when the musician or the singer is busy trying to update their social media, you know, or take the selfies during a recording session. Yeah, it is important, I know, and there's always a time and place for it. Focus on the work, get your takes, focus on, on uh, um, uh, the recording first. Then once that's done, you can do all your videos and whatever uh, social media posts that you wanted to, okay? So this is definitely not going to be easy, okay? Uh, I wish there was a quicker way that you can overcome this situation. But as with all things, it's a process that takes time, it takes hard work, it takes perseverance. Most importantly, it takes discipline as you hone your craft. Along the way, you will definitely encounter some obstacles, but if you keep at it, soon enough, right, red light syndrome, it's just gonna be a thing of the past. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful and informative. Hopefully you found the strategies and some of the techniques that you can put into practice, right? And very importantly, okay, you have to put this into practice. Hopefully you find it useful. If you did, please do leave a like. Uh, please do share this with your friends as well. And once again, if you're not yet a subscriber, remember to click on the subscribe button, okay? Do consider as well becoming a patron 
Once again, head on down to the website. Link is also down in the description below. Check out the rest of the videos that I have on the channel. And I'll see you again real soon in another video, another time. Stay safe, stay happy and healthy. Happy recording and mixing. Peace, love and music.